Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to build a professional Nerf target board for the more powerful and long range Nerf blasters out there, such as the AEB, which is known as Automatic Electric Blaster. Without further ado, let's get cracking with the build. Alright, this is what I came up with so far for the Nerf target board. Over here, we have a piezo and a controller board which reads the reading of the piezo. There's a potential meter here for you to set the sensitivity. Interestingly, it outputs a steady 0.29 volts and the voltage increases when there's vibration. And currently, I've connected the 5 volts input to the VCC out from the Arduino and also I have hooked up the analog output from this piezo controller board to go into the analog pin here, A1 on the Arduino and lastly we have the common ground let me show you the Arduino board this is the micro Arduino and basically here is a DST connector just to hook up a LiPo battery so that we can test this little contraption we have over here Now that was a quick test of my Arduino codes doing a heat detection and turning the digital pin 16 to output high which returns 5 volts on the output with that, we could control a 5 volts relay switch to activate anything that we like. Now, in order to display the score of hits to the large digit display, we need to hook up some wirings to allow that. This is what I came up with so far. Here we have the 12 volt supply going through a switch. When the switch is powered on, we get 5 volts for the Arduino. And if you notice, the 5 volts also travel along the orange line to this pin here and that goes to the 5 volts in of the SparkFun LED driver board there's also an unregulated 12 volt supply from the LiPo that goes along the red line all the way to this pin here that supplies 12 volts to the SparkFun LED controller board next we have pin 456 color coded blue, green, yellow and they go to the 3 pins on the SparkFun board to display the number of heats, I'm using this 7 segments LED display and it needs a driver board which is this one here from Sparks Fun. It's a clone board but it looks exactly the same. So if you see here, there are indications of the pinout and alphabets. So the first thing that I've done is to label the pins accordingly on the display. And here you can see pin 1 to 5 and on the other side we have pin 6 to 10. These tiny resistors are not sufficient. They have too little resistance. For the DP pin, if you look at the display, it's such a small surface area. So you don't need that much current. So two 1K resistors would be used for the displays, one each and for the other pins, we'll be using the 220 ohms resistor well, let me solder everything and then show you how it looks like alright, all the wirings are done up and this is how they look like now it's time to hook it up to the Arduino Well, now we know the demo codes work fine for a large digit display. Here I've merged the codes with mine and it will do a heat detection and increment the score accordingly. Let's try it out. Score of 0. Now let's simulate the heat. Nothing happens. Yep, there you go. One. Let's try again, somewhere else on the board. Yeah, it works. 
How about here? Let's try a light tap from the far corner. Yeah, it's working fine. To spice things up further, let's add this micro relay switch to our circuit to activate some sounds. Now here's the wiring diagram. Basically, we have pin 16 supplying 5 volts to activate the relay. And then the two red wires will be connected to the sound system to turn on the sound. While I was trying to look for a suitable sound system, I came across this cheap Nerf target, which is pretty cool. It's around 3 USD and it make cool sounds which we could use for our project. This is how it looks like. Let me turn it on. And basically there is a switch inside. Now to get to the sound system inside the Nerf target board, I just need to unscrew these two screws and undo the clips that are holding the two halves together. Next, we remove another three screws. And here we go. Well, we only need the soundboard here and the speaker for our project. Let's see whether it still works. Yep. So these two wires will go to our micro relay switch. Well, I decided to cut out this part of the case as it is the speaker enclosure. The enclosure is necessary to amplify the sound coming from this tiny speaker. Anyway, this is how the completed sound system looks like. All the wires are tidied up and soldered to the relay switch. And one thing to note is that my fibers regulator will supply too high a voltage for this system because it runs on two AA batteries. Hence, I have added two 4416 diodes in series to step down 5 volts to 3.5 volts to power the entire circuit. Well, to spice things up further for the Nerf target board, I found this interesting sound system whereby you can hook it up to a computer and upload your preferred MP3 so you can have any sound effects or song if you like. It's triggered by this push switch which I will replace with the same 5 volts relay that will be controlled via our Arduino. Instead of using the button batteries, I will be using this micro USB. And this way we could hook up 5 volts from our regulator. The speaker is pretty fragile, so I've added a cap to protect it. This is basically some random plastic border caps which I found. And here I have a spool of wire to connect the relay all the way down to our Arduino. And yes, I will need to program a new pin for the logic control. I found this mini storage box at a hardware store and it's just the right size to fit both the sound systems. Here I'm using hot glue to glue them in place and this is what we have so far. At the front, we have the cutouts for the sound. I'm going to merge the ground and the power cables together. Alright, I've done up the wiring and here's the completed sound box. It looks pretty neat. In this shot, we have the final completed wiring for all electronics and the only changes from before are this pair of wires which tap 5 volts from the output pins of the spark fun board and these two pins, pin 14 and pin 16 which are used to control the relay switches for the two sound systems respectively. For the target board itself, I found this document holder, which is rather nice. It opens like this, so I could store the electronics inside and the LiPo battery. Here I have a t-shirt. And I've cut out the back side of it. And use masking tape to top it. This is the backing board to hold the fabric. And here I have applied layers of double sided tape. It's a bit small so I guess it will chop up that picture in half and we have a figure 12 instead of a figure 11 which is fine. Alright it's all done up and it's looking great. Look at that. 
Well, to prevent the darts from damaging the large digit display, I found this cover, which is actually a plastic box. And on each corner, I attach with epoxy some wall plugs. And they will allow screws to be secured at the four corners. Without further ado, let me hook up everything with the electronics onto this orange corrugated board. Ta-da! Here it is. This is my very own professional looking figure 12 target. It's a figure 11 chop and a half, so I call it a figure 12. And it works really well. The first shot that lands on the board will trigger the intro song, which is the Transformers. You could hear the voice of Optimus Prime and Megatron. And then the scoring begins and the second shot will start immediately. And it triggers one hit over there. Now let me try with using some other projectile like a rubber band. Here I have a rubber band gun. And let's see if the rubber band will trigger a score. Yep, it works. Now what about other projectiles like this one here? It uses the small pellets shell ejection type. So basically the pallet here, the red plastic will be separated from the shell. And because it's such a small projectile, I'm wondering if it will trigger a hit on that target board. Let's try that. Well, that works really well. All the plastic pallets that landed on the board registered their hits. For the last shot that I fired, you notice that there isn't a score being registered. That's because the last shot of this toy gun will only eject the shell. It will not fire any pallet. And likewise, the first shot from this toy gun will fire the pallet, but doesn't eject the shell. The shell is still left in the chamber. Still a fun toy with blowback action. and slight lock. Well, so much for the range test. I scored 6 out of 9 shots, which isn't too bad. We've come to the end of this video. It has been a long one and I hope you enjoy the content. Thank you once again for dropping by and I will see you in the next one.